you know what prevents me from being lonely the fact that there are so many of you who join with me every saturday and even before 11 o'clock i start seeing on the chat box good morning good morning hi good morning good morning ali good morning everyone good morning team banjara that is what gives me that reassurance that yes there may be lockdown there may be pandemics and everything but we are still there we are with each other and i think that is what is needed loneliness is something that you cannot share it belongs exclusively to you you cannot say that can i give you a little bit of my loneliness please no you can't do that you have to live with your loneliness right so in order to understand what i am talking about because i've been talking about this for the last 20 years and uh, not too many people seem to think that this is something of significance so even the fact that those of you who have joined us today i really thank you because uh, you are getting into an area which according to me is a very very significant very important area but according to a lot of people it does not have that you know importance or it looks okay it's there somewhere in the corner it's not all that great that is what people seem to uh, think which is not uh, uh, true like i give the example you know when people say that we have made so such tremendous progress in uh, uh, neurosurgery and even a brain tumor today is 100% curable if it is caught in the early stages i keep telling uh, people that you know 0.1% population may be suffering from brain uh, tumor and you're really uh, doing a wonderful job for them but why don't we look for a cure for jealousy what is the percentage of people who suffer from jealousy in fact i can say what is the percentage of people who do not suffer from uh, jealousy that is easier to total up and yet nothing is done about it we seem to take it in our uh, stride as oh yeah it is there but we can do something about it right the same thing applies to loneliness see let us understand and accept the fact that human beings are social animals we are primates we thrive on social contact we live breathe human interaction communication and relationships are two significant life skills which have been propounded by world health organization and yet not enough significance is given to this concept of understanding what is loneliness okay let me of course most of you know it but just for putting it on record let me uh, emphasize on the uh, fact that loneliness is not being alone loneliness is not solitude in fact solitude is something really wonderful more than 30 years ago i read that book called walden walden is the name of a small lake in the middle of the jungle and here was this person who used to take time off there was a dilapidated and abandoned cottage on the banks of that uh, lake called walden he used to go there and spend days together in complete solitude his name was robert frost and he wrote that famous poem which said that i was going through the jungle and at one place the road forked into two uh, parts one was a road which everybody was taking you can you could make out you know that it is continuously being used one was a road less traveled i took the road less traveled and i've never had to regret but that is the crux of unloneliness those of you who can enjoy solitude being alone and in this era i have to add being alone minus your laptop and smartphone if you can be alone 
by yourself and enjoy your own company you have achieved something which even the greatest of highly qualified people and highly accomplished people have not been able to do just to give you an example i have had this fascination to study uh, people who have been at the pinnacle of success they have been so popular powerful that there would be maybe thousands of millions of people clamoring for them but once they finished with that and they went off into oblivion when they were no longer either in positions of power or they were no longer in positions where people would be chasing behind uh, them that is the time when uh, they start introspecting and looking back at their whole life and i have been an ardent observer of such people every time i come across somebody who has had wealth or status or power or position or popularity and then it started waning uh, uh, away as they started facing what we call as the sunset years of their life and they realize that there is no going back nobody is going to get me back the good old days when people would want to talk to me people would be surrounding me and people would be admiring me it's all over and whatever time i have left in this world is going to be a time of loneliness it hits very badly i am not taking names out of respect for such people because they have been great achievers they have done great things in life but the one thing that they forgot was that some day they are going to be alone if some of them have done it while they were in power while they were in position if they enjoyed solitude if they enjoyed being by themselves if they enjoyed their own company if they have befriended themselves then regardless of what life throws at them they have not had to worry till the last day they have lived contented and peaceful lives so starting with old age with where definitely for various reasons the chances of loneliness are going to be very high i want to make you aware that today i find many many very young people who are also lonely you know youngsters always have friends they just have to pick up the phone and uh, call up somebody or message somebody and there'll always be somebody behind them you know that when a youngster falls sick and lands up in hospital there'll be a clutch of his friends every day coming to cheer him up coming to spend time <clears throat> with him that is what youth is all about right so youth should be one phase of your life when you should definitely not be lonely but let me tell you as a counselor since i interact with people who sometimes do take the trouble of reaching out to me and telling me things which they normally don't tell anybody be it their parents not even sometimes their best friends the deep down inside they are feeling lonely now if loneliness has come down from the last sunset years of you know 90 100 years of age down to people who are 18 20 25 and if they are feeling lonely do you agree with me that this is a pandemic and this is a greater pandemic than any viral pandemic like covid or any of those because they will come they will go there will be a vaccination against uh, them which may take 3 months 6 months 1 year 2 years 3 years but it will come and before you know it it will be all over 100 years back we had that plague uh, which had hit mankind and it had wiped out even a city like bangalore one third of the population was wiped out compare that with the number of deaths that have taken place with uh, covid one third of the population of a city like bangalore had been wiped out and it was global it happened in all countries all over the world maybe some cities uh, got uh, more wiped out than just one third of the population all that happened but life moved on isn't it 
we are now 100 years ahead of uh, that era and we are still around hanging around so taking that into account by not undermining the seriousness of uh, uh, covid i'm just telling you that there is much much more like i gave you the example of uh, you know um, brain tumor and jealousy do we need to spend more time worrying about brain tumor or do we need to spend more time worrying about jealousy the same way do we need to spend more time worrying about covid or do we need to spend more time worrying about loneliness that is a question that i would like you to ask yourself if somewhere along the line either you or people known to you somebody whom you care for somebody who is important to you it could be as i told you a very elderly person whom you have known or who's related to you who's heading into those sunset years where one by one one by one all his friends and contemporaries are passing away and he is getting isolated physically he is no longer agile so he can't even if he has some friends he can't just uh, walk down and go to their houses or something he is confined to home or sometimes even to bed when you see such people or even if you see some young people you know who are otherwise agile active they are working they are studying they are doing whatever they can but somewhere if you see that touch of isolation if you see that touch of not connecting at an emotional level to people when that happens i want you to understand like parul says that happened with me it has happened to many of us it may happen to some of us in future the same way as we some people say that yes i got covid and i have recovered and there are other people you know to whom covid will come uh, tomorrow or next year or whenever it has to uh, come so this is what i want you to please uh, um, understand now comes this important thing to be able to tackle anything like if you want to tackle a virus if you want to tackle anything else what do we do we normally look for the cause first and then we do the symptomatic uh, uh, treatment right so what is the cause of uh, um, loneliness the first and most important one that i have uh, um, uh, seen is when people want to grab on to others when you feel incomplete within yourself when you feel i will be complete only when i get somebody or you have got that somebody and you have become so dependent and so clingy on that person that you feel that i cannot live with the, without this uh, person however close however dear that person is that person is an individual in his own right and you are an individual in your own right you have to live your life and you have to die the way the day you are going to die he or she has to live their life and die the day that they are ordained to uh, die you cannot depend on other people so if you or anybody known to you you find yourself you know getting more and more and more you know, attached to people it could be one person it could be two three people but when you find that i cannot do without this person i am incomplete without this person i need this person regardless of what is happening please understand that you are an excellent candidate for this virus called loneliness it's going to creep up on you without even you are realizing it and then when it hits you you won't know how to deal with the, the uh, thing similarly people who have low self esteem people who do not consider themselves worthy what happens is if anybody is nice to them they say oh i am not worth making friends with but see this person is making friends with me i am not worth spending time with but see this person is spending time with me so i have to be extra grateful to these people fine nothing wrong with that but inevitably what happens uh, is that the wrong type of people take advantage of you when they realize that your self worth is low that you do not consider yourself as a person who deserves to be befriended deserves to be cared for deserves to be loved they say come on let's take advantage so before you know it 
the wrong type of people are coming closer and closer to you, building relationships with you and giving you some sort of a hope that, yes, these people are there with me, but they are coming in with vested interests. Similarly, there are people who try to reach out, but they realize that you are becoming clingy. You are becoming emotionally dependent on uh, them. When that happens, they again start getting perturbed. Nobody wants to hang on to somebody who is emotionally dependent on the, uh, you. So lonely people form wrong relationships, even with the right people. If I am lonely, and if I feel low self-esteem, or if I feel that nobody will love me if I don't reach out, I have to hang on to somebody. I meet somebody very nice. Or that somebody is already there in my life. And I start interacting. Without my realizing, I start grabbing for more and more attention and time and affection. At some point, the other person says, sorry, I have my own life. I have other people in my life. You're not the only person. Even if you are the spouse or the ch child or the parent or the best friend or whatever you are, you are not the only person in my life, the other person says. And I don't like the way you are dumping all your emotions onto me. So what happens is that the other person starts withdrawing. Now, when the other person withdraws, this person who is feeling insecure runs behind him. Emotionally runs behind him. And when that person sees that you are coming running emotionally, the person takes two steps further back. And this process continues. And the person says that, see, even this person for whom I'm willing to do anything and everything, even this person is not responding to me. And I reinforce to myself that I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. And nobody will befriend me. Nobody will be there. And I'm going to be lonely. By saying that I'm going to be lonely, I become lonely now. Innumerable times I've had young ladies discussing with me about, let's say, their marriage plans. They are not married. They are leading a good life, very fulfilling life. They may have their vocation, profession. They have very good friends, family. Everything is going fine except for the fact that they are not married. You know what happens? Innumerable people start telling them, right now it's OK, Ma. You are young, you are healthy, you are working, so it is fine. In your old age, you will be lonely if you don't get married. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. How many old people I know who have been married for donkey's years, the spouse is still around, but they are lonely. They don't connect to their spouse just because there is a life partner that does not necessarily mean that the partner is going to take away your loneliness. Let's understand that. And that brings me to one of the most you know, significant angles to loneliness. Dan Kiley wrote a book called Living Together, Feeling Alone. He coined the word LTL, Living Together Loneliness. And I think he wrote that for Indian conditions and Indian culture. In the West, most people live alone or in very small units, one person, two person, very maximum, rarely three people in one house, however big the house is. Here we have three, six, nine, 12, 15 people living in one house. So in our culture, loneliness shouldn't have been there, no? So when we find people who are undergoing this LTL, living together loneliness, I want to emphasize on the fact that it is worse than the, you know, being alone. Let's say I'm totally alone. I don't have anybody. I stay on my own. I don't have any, uh, you know, person with whom I can interact uh, with. At least I can be myself. 
because there's nobody around me. I don't have to put on a mask. I don't have to pretend to be whatever uh, it is. But when I'm surrounded by people, I have to put on a smiling face. I have to extend courtesies. I have to listen to what people are saying, which I agree or I don't agree. I don't have the space to be myself. I have to be pretend to be, be part of that group or that family. And that makes it worse. Because not only am I emotionally lonely, I also have to play a role of you know, pretending to be what I am not. Okay, before I come to the last part, that is, how do you insulate yourself against uh, loneliness? What do you do to ensure that loneliness will not hit you? And if loneliness has already hit you, how to prevent that? They say that the people who got COVID and recovered without too much of hassles are very lucky people because they have developed antibodies and they will not get uh, COVID or something. But people who have undergone loneliness once or more than once, there are no antibodies to prevent them from getting lonely again. In fact, the chances of their getting lonely are little more than people who have never been lonely. If you have never been lonely, there is a chance that you are doing the right things in terms of relationships, in terms of managing your emotions, in terms of loving solitude and befriending yourself. So if you have not had that in the past, chances are you may not get it. But if you have already had it in the past, that means you are vulnerable. It is like a person who every now and then falls sick with fever. His resistance is low. There's something wrong in his metabolism. That's why the moment the weather changes, the moment he eats something wrong, the moment he gets wet in the rain, he falls sick and he gets fever, right? The same thing happens to us. So please remember that you cannot run away from loneliness. That's one thing which I come across so often. People come and make a statement. Ali, I just want to get away from everything. I don't want to be with anybody. I just want to run away somewhere. OK, where do you want to run away? I don't know, but I just want to run away. Do you really think that there is a place you can run away to? Just because physically you are not with that A, B, C, D who are upsetting you and who were causing you discomfort. You go somewhere else and you go from the frying pan to the fire, isn't it? In fact, we have this lovely place called Manthan. It's six acres of calm, quiet, serene place. And it's just about 30, 40 minutes drive from Artinagar on good highway. I keep telling people. It's not a commercial place. We don't rent it out. It's not a resort. But if you want to just get away from whatever worries or troubles that you are facing uh, uh, right now, go and stay a few days in uh, Manthan. You'll make arrangements for food or whatever is the requirement. Be by yourself. I have hardly come across the average about two or three people in a year who go there and spend even two days. Here it is. It is available to you. Serene, calm, quiet, safe. Six feet high compound wall with a locked gate and enough uh, dogs to bark if somebody comes anywhere near you. Food is available. Running water, hot water is uh, available. Clean uh, bed sheets and beddings without any bed bugs and cutmals that is available uh, to you. And it doesn't cost anything. It's ours. Go enjoy yourself. People don't do it. Now, why I'm mentioning this to you is the significance of the fact that we talk about running away, but we don't do anything about it. Because we do not need to run away physically. We need to move away mentally and emotionally. How do we do uh, that? First, your fears and insecurities, anxieties. The more you are worried about the third wave is going to hit us and then what will happen and what will do this? My children are there or my elderly parents are there. What is going to happen to them? 
the more I get into those fears and anxieties, the greater is the possibility that I'm going to hit upon loneliness. Please understand that lovely little song which I've been hearing right from my childhood. Ke sara sara. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Ke sara sara. Can we not have that simple thing? Can we not live life fully today instead of worrying about uh, uh, you know what is going to happen tomorrow? The other thing I've already mentioned to you, self-esteem. Please see, just because yesterday your self-esteem was good doesn't mean that lifelong your self-esteem is going to be good. Check it out. Have you of late started making statements, I'm no good, I don't think I'll succeed, I don't think anybody loves me? It has nothing to do with the outside world. It is to do with you. Can you work on the, uh, that? Similarly, denying emotional pain. Physical pain, even if you deny and you go ahead, as long as it's not very serious, the body heals by itself. The mind takes a very longer time to heal. Can you ask yourself, whenever you feel emotionally upset or hurt, what am I doing about it? Denial leads to deeper and deeper emotional distress and eventually to loneliness. Another point which I want to caution you about which leads to loneliness is taking too much responsibility for others. Trying to become that omnipotent. Leave this to me. Leave that to do. I will take this responsibility. I will do that. I can do this. No. You are also human like anybody else. You have your limitations. Don't stretch yourself too much. You may land up with that uh, uh, loneliness. Addictions, shortcuts to loneliness. I'm feeling very lonely, so I go and have a drink and then I feel nice. Sorry. You are not only postponing your loneliness, you're making it worse. It hits you much worse in the morning than it was now. Face up to it. Avoid any form of shortcuts, addictions. And lastly, just one more important tip I want to uh, give you is that we do not give enough uh, you know, significance to it. But sleep is a very, very important part of ensuring that your day goes uh, well. You connect to people. You can remain in solitude. You can remain among people if by chance your sleep is disturbed, you're not getting sufficient sleep, or worse than that, you're getting up in the middle of the night and then not being able to go back to uh, sleep. Those are the things which can shake you up very badly without even realizing. I'm very tired. I've had a hard day's work and I go to sleep. I toss and turn at 10 o'clock. I start off by 11, 11.30. I finally get sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, I wake up. And suddenly there's a big vacuum around me. I don't know what is happening. Whenever you have these sort of things, these again look very small. People say, okay, I will do this. I'll take a sleeping tablet for sleep is like alcohol to run away from a bad boss or a bad spouse. It not only just postpones, it makes matters worse. There is a thing called you know, medication-induced insomnia. People who get addicted to sleeping tablets, they find that their sleep is getting worse at times. These are the small, small things, simple tips, which all of us are aware of. But somewhere along the line, we need to do a little more of practice than we are doing uh, right now, isn't it? Otherwise, the ultimate most horrible thing that can happen to a lonely person is the person becomes suicidal. And nobody can predict which lonely person will cross that line and start developing suicidal thoughts. But it's very close. It's like you are standing on the parapet of a 100 feet high building. One wrong move, your balance shifts, a strong breeze comes, and you can topple over. So please keep this in mind.
I'm going to be now looking forward to your questions. I'll take a quick one minute break because Adil has brought a nice hot cup of tea for me. And I hand you over to Sunita for that beautiful inter intermission. Yes, Sunita. Yes, thank you, Ali. So uh, hi, everyone. So I'm Sunita. And uh, I coordinate a lot of courses at Banjara. But I, I'm here today to talk about uh, our flagship course, Diploma in Counseling Skills. And uh, it's called DCS in short, actually. And uh, the thing about this course is the unique learning environment that we provide. Uh, the reason being, it's a totally practical course. There is no theory, no textbooks. Why? Because we are talking about human beings here. We are talking about people, their emotions, their feeling, and what best way can we learn it? What better way to be uh, to learn it than to do it in person, right? So that is why this course is a in-person classroom course. But the beauty is that the environment is such that there are people from all walks of life. Uh, be it uh, a college student who is doing their psychology or be it a CEO of an organization, a housewife who has uh, decided to step out and uh, understand uh, counseling for her uh, family's sake or a person who wants a second inning in their life, uh, you know, have uh, to pursue a passion in uh, learning people. Uh, uh, we have we've had people from military organizations, Air Force, um, sports people. The combination and the number of the variety of people in the classroom is such that we get to learn wide, uh, uh, you know, uh, wide details about various aspects of human life, emotions and uh, feelings. Right. And that uh, that itself is something which is the main uh, or rather, uh, I would say the USP of this course. So uh, the thing about this course is that there's no exams either. Why we don't have exams? Because competition is uh, something which makes people uh, feel like, you know, I should exceed, I should get better, I should come out first. But then without competition, we all can go together hand in hand, help each other grow and learn in a much larger uh, aspect. And that is why this course doesn't have any exams. There's no theory, no textbooks. And uh, uh, let me just tell you about the classrooms. Uh, the classroom is sessions are about to start in a few days. Right. But then before even going to the classroom, we have other act activities that happen uh, uh, here. Uh, the reason being, like they say, charity begins at home. Uh, counseling other people begins with a self-awareness journey. And so we start with an uh, introspective and an awareness questionnaire which we give to all of our students. So if I ask you today, like, you know, why don't you go sit aside and think about yourself? We'd be like, uh, what do I think about? You know, maybe I should think about my career. Maybe I should think about my family. But it is so uh, sometimes so very difficult for us to go inside and have that journey on the inside, knowing more about ourselves. Right. So the questionnaire is there so that we can give you pointers as to what you can think about which aspect of yourself can you think about dig a little bit deeper find that person the real person inside you and bring it out and put it in a piece of paper which would be confidential right you're putting you're going to pour your heart out there and that piece of paper would be confidential and will be seen only by dr ali who would personally take it read it and when he reads your thoughts he will also have his own thoughts which he would put us put uh, next to your thoughts and give it back to you as a feedback, a personal feedback from his side so that you can kickstart this journey on that note, right? So uh, once we do this um, introspection and awareness questionnaire, we go into uh, counseling sessions where the senior counselor uh, in the academy will be having a conversation with you. Some people are good at expressing in words, but few others might be good at expressing in person by talking, right? So uh, counseling sessions uh, to understand how it feels to be uh, on the on the other side, right? To be on the other side where uh, you get counseled and you get a, a idea as to what it 
it feels to be counseled so that when you go to a class and when we talk about how it feels uh, for a counselee when you do certain things you can actually resonate uh, with that and you know yes when i did my counseling session this is how i felt uh, right so that that is how we would do it and first session we would ask you to do it but all further sessions is your prerogative and and may i insist over here that all uh, counseling at banjar academy is totally free uh, so uh, feel free to approach us not only for the course anybody and everybody in case you feel that you need to uh, have a conversation with somebody just pick up the phone call us or you know write to us and we'll be there for you all right so back to dr ali <laughs> thanks sunita that gave me a chance to enjoy my uh, tea now uh, while i wait for your uh, um, uh, questions have you come across any time when either you yourself or somebody known to you has made a statement like nobody understands me think okay when you say nobody you are also a body right so you have to include yourself in it and if nobody understands you and you want to be understood who should be the first person yourself so whenever you make a statement no one understands me first ask yourself do i understand me or not that's exactly what sunita was also telling you how we take you through that self introspection even in our counseling course or various other things or anybody who comes to us for counseling also what we do is that if i don't understand myself how do i how do i expect others to understand me if i don't befriend myself how do i expect others to befriend me if i don't enjoy my own company how do i expect others to enjoy my company very simple basic principles but we have to face it and we have to do something about it in fact it is said that lonely people slowly start degenerating in their health also it's a fact that more and more lonely people fall sick and more and more lonely people die early Ah, Ramesh has asked. Please explain what exactly is loneliness. Is it being alone all by oneself? It is exactly the reverse of that, Ramesh. I told you earlier. I am repeating again. If I can be totally happy, satisfied by being myself, with an asterisk mark there saying without any gadgets, that is truly being alone. if you are in front of a screen and some dishum dishum movie is going on or some comedy is being there and you are laughing you are fooling yourself it's like a person who drinks alcohol to forget about his loneliness that doesn't matter so actually speaking loneliness is and in fact that's the reason why i mentioned ltl living together loneliness i'm surrounded by people but emotionally i don't connect to those uh, uh, people and suman rightly says when one takes on too much on your plate then one can manage loneliness hits you badly that's what i mentioned the taking responsibility thinking of yourself as an omnipotent person only i can do this only i can take care of my family members i am the only one who can run this office any of those things inevitably take you towards uh, loneliness the higher you go up in any hierarchy it takes you into that and nur has asked a very good question can loneliness become an addiction absolutely no loneliness once it hits on you and you do not do anything about it is like a very serious chronic illness today if i get cancer and i go to the right doctor and i start the treatment within no time i can bounce back to 100% normalcy but if i allow myself to go into the first stage second stage third stage fourth stage and then i go to a doctor what are the chances that he can heal me the same thing applies over here if i want to overcome loneliness that's why i started off by saying please be aware 
are you feeling that nobody loves me nobody cares for me these days my friends are not there are you living in the past once upon a time you know i had these friends and we used to enjoy ourselves now those people are not there or i am not connecting with my life partner the way i used to do we used to enjoy so many activities together now we seem to have drifted apart what we do is firefighting we try to resolve only that problem how do i improve my relationship with this person or how do i get into a group where i can laugh and joke and enjoy that is only symptomatic healing we need to go deeper inside and say what is it because of which i am not able to maintain this relationship be it with my family member be it with a friends be it in office any uh, there every time yes uh, satyan i was uh, just about to come to uh, this thing if you find that you cannot connect with human beings for whatever reason we need to go deeper to understand is it really that bad that you cannot connect to any human beings but i am even taking it to the extreme now that satyan has mentioned it even if i say that there are no human beings who care for me what about animals they are fantastic and i am not even restricting it to pets you make friends with a stray dog and you see how much of unconditional love he or she gives you if you have doubts on that please drop into banjara's office and spend 5 minutes with our dotty dotty is our mascot who doesn't belong to us she belongs to the whole street from top to bottom and she moves around happily she comes she greets everybody those who pet her she is very happy with them those who don't pet her she has no grudge against them but she is available if i am feeling upset if i am feeling low all i have to do is to say dotty come here and dot is wagging her tail and i am petting her and i know that i am not alone in this world the other aspect of uh, um, uh, is to understand that the more you you reach out to other people who are lonely the better are the chances of you not getting lonely and that is expressed beautifully uh, in uh, uh, volunteering i'll come back to that in a minute because kumar swami has a good question um, you know uh, uh, how can we identify whether a cycle of loneliness will there be episode will be, yes one episode become aware of it second episode become cautious third episode you say no i have to do something time and again this is hitting me and i think somewhere things are uh, going on right. satyan says that he has befriended so many stray dogs and that gives a, a wonderful uh, joy jyoti says my husband is always worried about his father how to handle his Uh, restlessness yes i understand if he really loves his father and he's very connected to him and if his father is growing old and you know not keeping very good and it's very natural for a son to be concerned or worried but can we convert that worry into action can you help your husband whoever it may uh, be i'm speaking in general not just to jyoti that whenever you find that a person says i'm very worried about my father i'm very concerned about my parent or whoever it may uh, be tell them convert that worry or that anxiety into action what can you actually do for him can we take no i'm already doing this 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 add on since you're so concerned about him since you're so worried about him why don't we add one two three more uh, um, steps and here comes a very very important uh, uh, thing please remember when you want to reach out to somebody when you want to give you know help to somebody when you want to take away the loneliness of somebody please always understand give the person what he or she needs and wants not what you think he wants i know of so many people oh i have this elderly person in the uh, neighborhood no nobody is there so i will go every evening and sit one hour and talk to him and i sit there for one hour telling him how horrible my boss is and what problems i'm facing and what financial difficulties i'm going through poor man does not want it he would rather sit alone at home or he would rather get a saregama and sit and listen to music 
rather than having a person like you around. That's a fundamental mistake that some of us uh, uh, make. We try to give people what we think they need. And that is where we miss out on this crucial aspect called empathy. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Observe the person. See what is it that he wants or needs. Sometimes needs are different and wants are uh, uh, different. Yes, Noor says that whenever I feel lonely, listening to music has a good healing effect. Whatever. Somebody has got music. Somebody has got gardening. Somebody. I know of people who talk to their plants. I have one uh, uh, friend who has named all her plants, given them names. And she calls out by name and talks to uh, them. She'll never be lonely. That much I can assure uh, you. Let all 7 billion human beings in this world boycott her. She will still have her uh, friends who are there in her uh, little garden that she uh, has. When he said there was an article in Deccan Herald on a uh, campaign that younger generation started in China lying down where they don't want to do any work, simply uh, lie down. I don't know much about that, so I wouldn't like to uh, comment on uh, it. But I would say, if you want to protest, instead of lying down, do something. No, I always remember, I don't know whether it is true or not, but there was this story saying that one big uh, shoe company, I think it was Bata or one of those very big shoe companies, where the workers were very unhappy. The workers wanted to protest. The workers wanted to tell the management that, sorry, we are not happy with the way you are treating us. Normally, what would workers do? They would stop work. They would declare a strike. You know what these workers did? They continued coming to the factory. They continued with the production of shoes. But they kept making only left shoes. Production is going on. Thousands of shoes are rolling out. But only the left shoe, there is no right shoe. So the company cannot sell it. Now, manpower was not lost. Production was not uh, uh, lost. But the message reached the management without causing damage. The moment management agreed, they started making the right shoes. And left and right both uh, you know, got into the uh, thing. Simple things like that. So what I exhort everybody who I is willing to listen to me is, have a sort of, you know, a constructive attitude. Have a positive attitude towards uh, uh, something. Do not have that negative attitude. That's what, you know, just lying down, protesting, refusing to uh, work. Starting from children to adults to anybody, I keep on telling them, you have a right to protest. You have a right to disagree, but do it in a constructive manner. Show them that this is what I can uh, uh, do. It is not difficult. If you just use your imagination a little bit, you will find that you are able to do a lot of uh, things. Yes, as Niti says, assertive uh, uh, protest. Okay, Jyoti says there are many known lost their old age parents due to Corona in India, not able to meet as they stay in USA. Parents alone, feeling lonely. How do these kids help the parents? See, we have to look at this thing in a holistic uh, manner. There are innumerable families where not only the children, but even the parents think that successful growing up and success in life is to go to the United States of America. Once you land up there, a young person, life is made. Even the parents are pushing, sending them over there without realizing these things. Forget about deaths and all that. I personally know innumerable A, B, C, Ds, you know, no? American born confused Desis. Who are very lonely in the Western countries. And there, even therapy costs a bomb. You can't even go for counseling or therapy. You come to Banjara, we give it free of course. That's why I have counselees who are in countries like USA who write to me from there on a regular uh, uh, basis because they have nobody over uh, there. So how does it help if you're earning millions of dollars, you're living in seven bedroom house with a swimming pool, you're driving a huge eight cylinder car. Somewhere along the line, loneliness is what you need to look into. And you are feeling not only lonely, you're also feeling guilty and frustrated that you cannot be with your old parents during their last days. I know of people who could not come for the 
funeral or the last rites of their parent, whether they died of COVID or not, is not important. But parents passed away here and their one and only child is sitting in the USA and could not come even. I know of one case where the last rites of that lady were performed by her, her driver, who was like a son to her. And her own biological son sitting in a Western country could not come and uh, be with uh, her. This is what I'm talking about when I say, you know, we have to insulate ourselves or inoculate ourselves against uh, uh, loneliness. Kumar is asking, what could be the shortest time of an episode of uh, loneliness? Don't go by numbers. Is it one minute, one hour, one day and all that? If it hits you, it hits you. If it is a very passing thing and, uh, you know, it just struck you for some short time and you moved on, fair enough. It is you who are the best uh, judge. How do you do it with pain, physical pain? When I have pain, it lasts for a few minutes. I ignore it and say, okay, now it's gone. No, I can go ahead with it. It lasts for a longer time. Somewhere, I don't keep a uh, track in terms of minutes or, you know, clock. But I say, no, this pain seems to be covering, coming too often. This pain seems to be lasting for a longer time. So I better go to the doctor. Exactly the same principle applies to the uh, mind. Yes, Nagratna, developing a hobby really helps. And one of the best hobbies, that's what I was telling, uh, you know, uh, when Satyan mentioned about pets, and Satyan is a classic example of uh, that, volunteering. I cannot think of a better hobby than volunteering, either with an established organization, group, NGO, or even by your own self. And volunteering for any purpose that you believe in, that's very important. You join a group which is providing emotional support to patients. You go to an orphanage and take care of the emotional needs of uh, uh, children. You feed stray dogs and uh, chat up with uh, uh, them. You plant a few trees, not just in your garden, but outside on the road and take care of it and have the pleasure. You see those two trees outside our uh, office. They were planted by us, not by BBMP. And they, we have constantly made sure that they are protected, they are taken care, care of. And today we have two lovely shade giving trees right in front of our office. Even in the peak of summer, they make the place uh, uh, cool. You can volunteer with trees and plants. You can volunteer with uh, uh, animals. You can volunteer with uh, human uh, beings. And yes, what Noor says, talking to and playing with kids overcomes loneliness to some uh, extent. Children are so, you know, innocent, so direct and so much in, uh, you know, with you that they help you to, children can also be, that is one area which we don't give too much importance to. Children can be a good way of, you know, self introspection. I always keep reminding people about that childhood uh, story. The emperor's new coat. When that emperor got cheated by that fellow who took away his gold and said that I'm making this coat which is invisible to all stupid people, visible only to wise people. And the emperor downwards, everybody kept saying, what a wonderful uh, uh, coat he is wearing. What a beautiful coat. It took one child standing in front of that procession to look carefully and shout loudly to his father. And he said, but daddy, the emperor is not wearing a coat. And the emperor heard that. And many people heard that. And then they said, yes, there is no coat. We have been fooled. So many a time, that's only one example that I has embedded in my mind. That's why I was repeating. Uh, uh, and yes, Suman has a very nice point. With kids, you can slip into a beautiful fantasy land. So if your loneliness is creeping on you, because of fears, anxieties, worries, what's happening? Third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, I don't know how many waves we are going to be uh, having. Even the ocean didn't have so many waves that we are predicting now are going to um, happen. All the doomsday prophet, left, right and center. I remember the newspapers. I don't uh, at all go anywhere near social media, but I do read the newspapers uh, regularly every morning. 
the newspapers used to go on and on and on giving figures about how the number of people infected is increasing, how the number of people in hospitals is increasing, number of people who are dying are increasing. As soon as the numbers started going down, the newspapers have lost interest. And today they are talking about complications. Even if you have had COVID, you can get it again. Even if you have recovered from COVID, you can get some other uh, uh, ailment. Even if you are vaccinated, you can still get uh, COVID. Now they are talking only those uh, uh, things. Please keep away from all these doomsday prophets. They can make your life miserable. There is life. Today, if I am alive, I am alive. Tomorrow, I don't know. I don't have to have a COVID coming and eating me up. I can just uh, step out trying to cross the road and one lorry may come and hit me and that's the end of my life. But that does not mean that I'm going to lock myself up. One of the reasons why loneliness is uh, uh, hitting is exemplified beautifully in the immortal poem of Guruji, Rabindranath Tagore, when he said, into such and such era, let my country awake. It's a prayer to God saying that where the mind is without fear and where boundaries do not hold a person back, I'm not quoting the exact words. You can look it up. It's a beautiful poem. It helps you to understand what he told 100 years uh, uh, back. The same thing. I think Guruji Rabindranath Tagore must have thought of 2020 and 2021 and written that uh, uh, poem. The lockdown is lifted. Physically, you are not uh, restricted. But your mind has to be free, isn't it? Sasikala says that after giving emotional support to friends, I feel so dull. What may be the reason? Now I have stopped listening to their problems. Yes, Sasikala, you have to insulate yourself from that. This is what we teach to our counseling students right from the beginning and throughout. We keep telling them the same way as a doctor who is dealing with communicable diseases. Need not be uh, COVID. It could be tuberculosis. It could be anything. The doctors are taught how to prevent that, uh, you know, the infection spreading to you. So they are told that you should wear gloves, you should wear a mask, you should wash your hands immediately after touching a patient. So a lot of such precautions are to be taken. I'm not going into the details of it now. But if you want, you can call us. We will give you tips. Please don't stop reaching out to your friends just because you are feeling dull at that uh, uh, time. Keep reaching out to uh, them. We are there. We provide you free counseling and we are can on a one-to-one -one basis help you with uh, um, that. Charulata says a very interesting thing, reading a book with animated and pictorial one to help a lot. No doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. Even if you want, take up a children's book. Don't feel ashamed to read a children's book which has got these big photos and cartoons and animations in it. I love to read comics even uh, now. And Noor has given one of the best possible, what do you say? Vaccination against loneliness. Hats off to you, Noor. She says, if I feel lonely, I visit my mother and her hug is the cure. There you are. There are so many loved ones who are willing to give you that hug, that hand holding, that smile, which can be seen even through the mask, and that twinkle of an eye, connection through the eyes, which tells you that, yes, this person is there. Arsena says, volunteering without any expectations is the best way to beat loneliness. 100% I agree with the, you. It gives you the confidence that there is always someone there who needs you and some cause which you can be of help. That's what I said earlier. In fact, I would like to close this session on this note because to me, that is the greatest way, number one, to keep uh, loneliness away from uh, uh, you. Number two, to keep your physical health well. Number three, to remain young. In Helping Hand, we have got volunteers who are reaching 90 years of age and they are as positive, as fit, as they were probably 30 years uh, uh, back. It gives a meaning to your life. It is. It gives you certain goals which are far better than the usual monetary or the physical uh, 
goals which people chase. So I would definitely like to leave you with this thought. Please reach out to others if you do not want to be lonely, if you want to take care of your uh, loneliness. And with that, let us wind up this session. We've got a very interesting topic lined up for next week. I'm going to meet you again at 11 o'clock next Saturday. It's a pleasure to have all of you with us. And I will continue to do whatever little I can. See you. Bye-bye.